Breaking news, four people, a 47 year old man and three children from Washington, Illinois have died after a car crash in Logan County. It happened just after 10 p.m. last night on Interstate 55 in Logan County. Illinois State Police say heavy rain caused one vehicle, a Chrysler van, to lose control and head into oncoming traffic. That's when police say a semi truck hit the van in the southbound lanes. Four people pronounced dead on scene from the van. Another child is in the hospital with life threatening injuries. We will continue to update you all with information both on air and online. And another story we are following broken out of jail and now on the run. We've been following this story all day long. Officers warning the public of four inmates that broke out of the Fulton County Jail saying they should be considered armed and dangerous. Our own Demetrius Sanders is live right now at the Fulton County Jail with more details. Hey, Demetrius. Well, Matt Kyrian, I am right outside the Fulton County Jail where the sheriff announced that four inmates escaped overnight and they are now on the run. Now, if you could take a look at your screen here for me, the four escapees are 34-year-old Jesse Davis, 26-year-old Cody Villalobos, 36-year-old Zachary Hart, and 22-year-old Eugene Rhodes. Now, after looking at their criminal history, all four men appear to be repeat offenders. Their charges ranging from possession of drugs to burglary and battery. One of the men, Rhodes, was actually awaiting transfer to the Illinois Department of Corrections at the time of his escape. Now, law enforcement is asking all residents in Lewiston and surrounding communities to secure their homes and vehicles and do not approach these individuals as they are considered armed and dangerous. And if your vehicle is missing, you are asked to contact the Fulton County Sheriff's Office immediately, and that number is right there on your screen. Now, earlier we spoke with Fulton County Sheriff Jeff Standard, who explains more on what may have led to the breakout. We had some inmates that found a deficiency in our jail after 35 years uh, here, and they exploited a problem that we had and have now four inmates have escaped. Now, Standard says he guarantees that all four escapees will be caught, and he hopes that they are prosecuted and more years are added to their sentences. Reporting live in Lewiston, Demetrius Sanders, WMBD News. Demetrius, thanks. We have an update to a crime alert for you this afternoon. A suspect is in custody after breaking into a Peoria gun store yesterday. Pinnacle Gun and Ammo on Main Street in downtown Peoria robbed of multiple firearms and ammo. Take a look here. You can see the window above the front door smashed and shattered glass pieces everywhere. Peoria police have taken this suspect into custody. We will continue to keep you updated as we learn more about the suspect's identity. And taking a look in the courtroom, 20 witnesses recounting memories as the murder trial continues of a East Peoria woman accused of killing her boyfriend's four year old son, Tate Thurman. Yesterday was day six of the Leslie Jett trial at the Taswell County Courthouse. The forensic pathologist who performed Tate's autopsy says the child had 260 injuries, including 84 just on his head, and his injuries are consistent with child abuse. Dr. Amanda Humans performed Tate's autopsy on February 24th, 2020. That was just four days after Tate was declared brain dead. She says there were nine injuries to the stomach and the amount of blood from his internal injuries led to multiple organ failures and ultimately cardiac arrest. In totality, all of his injuries are consistent with physical abuse. Did you reach an opinion on cause of death for Tate um, to a reasonable degree of medical certainty? Yes, his cause of death was blunt force abdominal trauma. Our coverage of the trial continues today. Dr. Human says Tate's autopsy took more than four hours instead of the usual hour and a half. Staying in the courtroom, a new trial date for two former Peoria businessmen accused of embezzling funds from the Pear Marquette Hotel. Both Monty Brandon and Gary Matthews appeared for a hearing yesterday. A judge set their jury trial for the week of December 6, giving the defense more time to review documents related to the case. Brandon and Matthews faced charges including mail fraud and money laundering. If convicted, they could face up to 20 years in prison. Both are scheduled for an in-person pretrial conference on September 15th. Getting a COVID-19 shot this summer may protect you from the virus and also deep in your pockets. Today, the Illinois Vaccine Lottery will draw four vaccinated people to win hundreds of thousands of dollars. 
It's the first of nine weekly drawings, an incentive by the Illinois Department of Public Health to get people to roll up their sleeves. One adult will receive a million dollars and three 12 to 17 year olds will get $150,000 in scholarship money. All residents vaccinated by July 1st have the chance to win prizes. We asked some people what they think of the lottery. If I were to win, I would think, yeah, it's just spam. This guy is joking with me. I would not think it would be real. And some say it's an exciting, effective way to get people to get vaccinated. That's a great idea because young people need incentives to get vaccinated, I think. Money is always a good incentive. I think if I won, I would um, probably give most of it to the national parks. Winners will be called by the Illinois Health Department. To qualify for future prizes, officials say to get vaccinated a week ahead of the drawings. Well, more resources for those in recovery. Peoria's newest sober living facility is officially open and looking for residents. The facility called his workmanship's haven sits on the corner of North Prospect Road. The owners, Michael and Lori Slaughter, say the building can house seven men, including a live-in manager. They say they recommend the residents stay there for six months to a year. The slaughters require the residents be at least 30 days clean, a graduate from a rehab program, and also look for employment and have the willingness to stay clean. And we have a health alert for you. Local health officials are spreading the word about mosquito concerns. A representative from the McLean County Health Department says it's time to start putting on your bug spray. Due to the flooding water these past few weeks, mosquitoes are able to transfer viruses and diseases to humans. The health department encourages the fo to follow the three R's, reduce the standing water where mosquitoes can breed, repel them by using insect repellent, and covering your skin with long sleeves and pants, and report dead animals to your local health department because they could have been infected by those mosquitoes. So from now until about mid-October, it's really the most active time for mosquitoes to spread these kinds of diseases. Uh, West Nile virus, the Zika virus, encephalitis, those are just three kinds of viruses that can cause some medical issues for people that we really look for. Mosquitoes can create breeding grounds in kiddie pools, clogged gutters, and flooded waters in basements. Make sure to clean those areas to ensure they don't spread viruses near you. From the city to the wild, CityLink is extending their Sunday shuttle service to Wildlife Prairie Park. The ride from downtown Peoria to the park in Hannah City is about 30 minutes. Passengers are dropped off at the park's visitor center where they can pay for entry to the park. You can see the full list of times the bus leaves the transit center and the park right now on your screen. Riders who take the shuttle must pay the regular bus fee $1 for adults and 50 cents for students and seniors. Exact change is required. And fitness is a way of life for Paula Van Kieran. And in this week's Open for Business, she's taking her skills to new heights. In June, the mother of four opened her business, Fitness by Paula, in downtown Peoria. The certified personal trainer offers her clients a unique way to focus on their health with the help of aerial acrobatics. That creativity and fitness stemmed from Paula's own personal journey. I was in a position to reinvent my life. And at that point, I wasn't sure what I wanted to do. I just dove into fitness as a self-therapy. <laughs> I'm not going anywhere. Sure. And it was twists and turns in Paula's personal life that led to some serious changes. You can find the full story on our website, ciproud.com. Well, there are some showers on the way for us on into your weekend. I'll let you know what you can expect with them up next.